I'm Ann Mutchler with Semiconductor Engineering. I'm here today at NetSpeed Systems with Sundari Mitra, the CEO, and she is going to talk about the next generation of semiconductor design tools, specifically for automotive and what we need there. So we're at the forefront of an explosion in automotive design as companies are looking for new ways to speed up their process in a more efficient and safe manner. Can you talk about that a little bit more? What you're seeing there? Absolutely. So as the automotive industry is transforming, um, one thing that's clear to all of us is that the, the number of, um, the sheer number, variety, of semiconductor components that are filling up a car is like exploding and increasing, right? Their complexity is also increasing because the amount of data they need to process and the decision making, the real time decision making is critically important, right? So for to enable the rapid growth in both the quality and the quantity of semiconductor designs that are going to go in the automotive market, I believe that we need a different design paradigm. We need a different set of tools. We need different set of IP that enable architects as well as implementation teams to do a high quality, efficient, uh, with very high time to market um, metrics of designs in the semiconductor industry. Sundari, can you draw this out for us and explain what this might look like? Absolutely. Um, and, you know, I want to take a few minutes and to kind of uh, walk you through my vision of how, um, you know, what kind of a canvas do architects and implementation, um, you know, designers in the semiconductor space, what do they need? What are some of the tools that they need to help them innovate at a much faster pace with, uh, you know, without compromising quality? Uh, so take, for example, uh, the application that we are considering, uh, which is the automotive application. So I envision that we will provide our design teams a infrastructure or, or a tooling capability where they have access to uh, the required IP libraries to build out these semiconductor designs. So what might be some of the components? Um, their processors and their processors of multiple kinds. I mean, they will have like compute processors, they will have uh, accelerators, they will have DSP engines, then you have system IP such as the MMU, the interrupt controllers, interconnect IP or um, you know IP to kind of connect up all these different IP blocks, then standard IP, what do I mean by standard IP uh, of the kind that we can get from our EDA manufacturers like FIs, memory controllers, and finally every customer who's building an automotive chip is going to have their differentiated customized own proprietary IP that they don't want to share with anyone. So what we would need is an IP library and abstracted out in a metadata format, which can be read in by a tool. And that tool would have a rendition of the chip floor plan. And you would be able to drag an IP from here and just place it onto the chip floor plan. And that way, uh, with the representative floor plan, and an automated platform, you should be able to connect up all the pieces of the IP with the architectural performance specifications and finally generate the SOC package, which includes the top level connectivity or integration of the SOC in terms of the RTL, the test benches, uh, models to do performance analysis and simulations, physical design collateral um, for an automotive space, the whole FMED analysis in terms of the safety and the SIL standards that you need to meet. So I would like to envision this as a process that enables SOC designers to get the integration of the SOC done in a matter of hours and not months. So how does this look for the automotive industry where designs have taken years and years? How are they approaching these new ways of even thinking about doing design? Traditionally, the automotive industry has been one of the slowest ones to embrace any kind of change. And um, I remember in my previous companies, if you got designed into an auto platform, you were set because you don't get designed out for decades. Um, that is completely turning around on its own head right now with innovative companies uh, like 
Tesla, like Waymo, uh, rumors of Apple doing its own car. Uh, these are technology companies. They are not used to, uh, you know, living in the same paradigm for even a year or two, right? So the pace of innovation is being set by this class of uh, auto companies. And uh, what is happening is that the traditional automakers, uh, you know, whether they're in the East Coast or whether they're sitting in Europe, are scrambling to try and keep pace with uh, what's happening over here. So um, fortunately, they have woken up because even though the initial customers we were getting were all Silicon Valley car manufacturers, now companies, technology companies like ourselves are getting approached by some of the more traditional makers to try and help them in their processes as well. So what is the new time frame for automotive design? The, the timelines that we are getting pushed to support are um, chip tape outs in the seven to nine month time frames. Uh, you know, even we are not used to it in Silicon Valley. We are more used to having chips that tape out in an aggressive schedule would be 12 months. Uh, but the newer companies are targeting seven to nine month tape out cycles. So as far as then the process node that these automotive chips are being manufactured at, it's long been the assumption that most nodes were more established. So are we seeing more advanced nodes being used today? Connected with that, what about longevity of the products themselves? What are the issues associated with that? The, the technology nodes uh, that uh, our customers are embracing are actually the uh, you know highest end nodes, so they're talking 10 nanometer, they're talking uh, 7 nanometers even, because these are very complex designs with a lot of bandwidth and heavy compute. These are not the analog small devices that are part of the powertrain of an automotive uh, machinery, right? So these are more of the compute engines, uh, the sensors, the, the LiDAR sensors, the processors for those. Um, yeah, so the technology nodes are the advanced ones. In terms of longevity uh, and what do they do to, um, you know, assure that it's very reliable, on the design side, we take in a lot of measures um, to ensure that we use all the design rules that allow for conservative, um, you know, longevity cycles of these uh, SOCs. Personally, I don't see a, a, a risk in terms of employing the design methods that we do. Having said that, though, there is very little data that exists today that we can fall back on to learn from, right? So do I expect that there are going to be learnings going forward in this new industry? I think there will be. But I think we will be quick to learn, adapt, retrofit, and ensure the safety and security of, of all the automotive uh, vehicles that we manufacture this way. So all of this new technology is really exciting. How do we really know it's going to work? Simulation has long been used and I'm curious to know what kind of new approaches are being explored for automotive. Um, you're absolutely correct. Uh, if the environment that I was proposing earlier was a simple method of integrating the IPs without having the power of simulation behind it, it does not serve the purpose. So the, the entire canvas that I'm referring to allows you to do system level simulations of all the integrated components, but it has to be abstracted to a higher level so that you know the speed with which you can simulate makes sense. If it takes you days to turn around a simulation at a high level, people avoid that, right? So it needs to be, that's why I talked about harvesting metadata at a high level and having, you know, system level models for performance simulations. It is imperative that we do extensive simulations. Um, I also, even with the, you know, seven to nine month uh, schedules that we are talking about, I don't know of a single customer who is not actually emulating the entire design before they tape their chip out. So in that compressed time, they're also taking time to actually do the full FPGA as well as hardware emulation of the systems. And uh, all of us IP providers are supporting them through that process. So there is a lot of data, more than ever before, 
how are you going to solve this problem and what are your customers looking for? Yes, you're right. I mean, the complexity of the data that we need to handle in doing the kind of analysis mm -hmm. is uh, at various levels uh, very complex. Example. Uh, one example is um, the dependency. So, for example, uh, you are processing uh, your normal driving patterns and there is an interrupt that comes about because there's a strange object that you have viewed in your sensor um, range of vision. You got to react to that. How do you model and factor those dependencies to figure out which of these interrupts is a higher priority, which is a lower priority, which one do you need to react to right away, which ones do you need to put away for a later date. So there is a lot of processing of information and data, but also there is a response to it that you need to control. We would not be able to do this unless we had the advancements that we have right now in terms of uh, uh, you know, the machine learning techniques, the CNN algorithm applications that we have. Um, so before you embark on creating um, the kind of simulation methods and the methodology that I've talked about, you absolutely need to have a lot of sample uh, databases. You need to kind of from there create a, you know, inference engines. So you got to train your algorithms after you have inferred that data so that you can get to the right solution. So, um, and that is what, uh, you know, any, any IP provider who wants to go in this space is going to have to do that. Sundry, thank you so much for the time and the explanation of this new technology. We really appreciate it. Uh, it's absolutely been my pleasure. I think your questions were very insightful and uh, I'm glad to be part of it.